Hello everybody. This is the old 84 Honda Civic that I'm driving. Nice old car. What we're going to do is check out my fuel savers on it. A friend of mine said, uh, what, what are you doing driving that old car still? And I happen to be a mechanic, so obviously it doesn't cost me much to be fixing on it. And here we go. Now here happens to be some of the plans and stuff, schematics of what I've done to improve this old car. And what we'll do is we'll start with the dash. We've got the uh, um, vacuum gauge there. And then this little green light here would be the deceleration fuel shutoff. Which, incidentally, I have uh, a little switch. I can do it manually as well, turn it on and off. I used to have this mounted on the stick shift. Uh, so I could just manually turn the fuel on and off. But uh, I've made that automatic now, so I put this manual switch off to the side. It can work as a anti-theft device, if anybody <laughs> wanted to steal an old car like this. This little blue light here, when it comes on, will be the Hyzor, and the yellow light below it is when the Hyzor is low liquid level. So that's what you see as you're driving down the road. This old Honda has over 400,000 kilometers on it and well, everything's working quite nicely. It's still a manual choke and now we'll take a quick look underneath to look at some of the modifications that are under here. Now that's the Hyzor circuit board which you can go to the Hyzor manual and, and learn how to build one of those. This is the original circuit board that I ever built. Um, back in the 90s for this car. This is the uh, circuit board for the deceleration fuel shutoff. And in this particular case what I've done is I've, instead of using the a vacuum switch to shut off the fuel, I have gone with a um, RPM switch. The RPM circuit allows the uh, fuel to be shut off if the throttle with this throttle switch is not pressed and the clutch which this clutch switch right here is not pressed so as soon as you press on the clutch or you press on the throttle it turns the fuel back on again and if the RPM is over um, 1100 RPM that's with this uh, uh, switch here that you can buy online, but you can build your own with my plans. Um, RPM switch. So if the RPM is over 1100 and there's no foot on the throttle and there's no foot on the on the uh, clutch, so that switch is activated. Or oops, sorry, clutch. That switch is activated. Then it will uh, um, shut off the fuel. Oh, and the one additional thing is I've tied into the uh, choke so that if the choke is activated, it also allows the fuel to flow. Because when you activate the choke, it advances the throttle and allows the uh, um, engine to run at a higher RPM. So with those uh, inputs, the uh, RPM fuel shutoff works just fine. Now what we'll do is we'll take a quick look under the hood to see the actual fuel savers. Okay, we'll start with the Hyzor, and what it is is it just makes Brown's gas. I can fill it very easily with a syringe here with the uh, this in this vacuum cap, and then when the water splits, it comes out this hose here, goes over, and I'll just take the air cleaner off here. The hose comes up around and comes into the air filter housing outside the air filter so that all the gas has to come through the air filter in order to get into the engine. That 
keeps any residual lie, which you can see there isn't really any, but it also keeps uh, any backfires from the engine from backfiring into the hyzor. So then, of course, the gases go into the engine and help increase combustion. Now, whenever you have combustion enhancement, you have to, in one way or another, be able to cut back on the fuel that's going into the engine. Now, I do that with the carburetor enhancer. So, we start with looking at where we T into the vacuum, and in this particular case, that's the T right there into the uh, vacuum that's underneath the carburetor for the PCV system. And that hose comes up and over here to this valve, which then I'm able to control the volume of vacuum going to the carburetor, float bowl. And then that hose comes underneath the carburetor, up through the air cleaner, and goes into the carburetor float bowl vent that way. Now, since it plugs the vent off entirely, I add my own little vent here, because the carburetor always has to be vented to work properly. So that's the carburetor enhancer, and with that I can cut back on the amount of fuel flowing from the carburetor. It does not prevent the fuel from getting to the carburetor, only prevents the fuel flowing from the carburetor into the engine. And I also added, to help the uh, prevent flooding situation, a uh, fuel pressure regulator. As you can see in my carburetor enhancer book, all those sort of things. Now, underneath here, we have, right here, a, a fuel shutoff valve. In this particular carburetor, it allows you to actually shut the fuel off going from the carburetor. Now, this is normally an anti-dieseling valve, but since it's electric, it makes it really easy to hook into my deceleration fuel shutoff circuit that I built in under the dash there. So that allows me to shut off the fuel going from the carburetor, in other words, it doesn't affect the fuel in the float bowl, anytime I want. Obviously, an old car like this, we're talking carbureted engine, and that's a pretty obsolete technology these days, but those are the fuel savers that I have on this particular car. This Honda Civic is getting 55 miles to the gallon. It has a Michelson cycle engine, which means that it has pre-combustion chamber so that you can burn leaner mixtures in the engine. So the next step would be to install the electronic carburetor enhancer. This is an upgrade to the basic carburetor enhancer which gives this carbureted vehicle, or any carbureted vehicle, the advantage of a true oxygen sensor feedback. This is a feedback that's better than most of the electronic fuel injection systems that are out there. You may have noticed that there was an additional LED on the dash. That LED is already there for the electronic carburetor enhancer. I've had other vehicles with this installed, and it's absolutely wonderful to see the little green light flashing Every time the green light comes on, of course, it's cutting back on fuel. So it, when you're seeing the green light flashing on, then you know that the uh, fuel is being cut back and you're saving as much as possible. I already have the electronic carburetor enhancer built. I just need to <laughs> get the time to install it. Here's the plumbing for the electronic carburetor enhancer. As you can see, it's just one additional um, line which has the uh, solenoid valve which opens and closes, and still you have another restriction valve because it's the one that um, controls how much vacuum goes to the carburetor when you want to cut back on the fuel. The basic carburetor enhancer is of course is still um, having some vacuum. Now when you, of course when I'm saying vacuum going to the to the float bowl that isn't actually true. It's drawing air pressure from the float bowl but it's the idea is to lower the absolute pressure in the float bowl to prevent the fuel from going over into the venturi and into the engine. So if you put enough vacuum there, you'll absolutely shut off the fuel going from the carburetor into the engine. This is a different way of shutting off the fuel than the using the um, anti-dieseling valves that I pointed out earlier. So my schematics, uh, later schematics, can go either way. People can have uh, either electronic shutoff valves or you can just put a vacuum to the float bowl. Here's the actual circuit that was in that box that you just saw. 
but uh, I have much better circuits now and if you go to my website uh, well buy the carburetor enhancer manual and then go to the carburetor enhancer resources uh, you'll see much better uh, later versions uh, more reliable stable all that kind of stuff not that these won't work it'll work just fine but uh, anytime you can make improvements it's just that much better hope you enjoyed this video look forward to seeing you on the website be sure to subscribe to our e-news for all the exciting things that are happening